When this coffin lid was discovered, it was thought to belong to Remagus, the first Bishop of Lincoln, 1072 to 1092, hence the surrounding inscription. However, on further investigation, it is now thought it might belong to Alexander, the magnificent third Bishop of Lincoln, from 1123 to 1148. There are many, cof many of these coffin lids dating way back all over the country. I just find it really interesting that the lids were sometimes used as grave markers, so the body wasn't actually buried that deep under the ground. The effigy of a skeleton or even an emaciated decomposing corpse is a type of church monument to the deceased. In the late Middle Ages it was especially prevalent and was meant to remind passers-by of the transience and vanity of mortal life and the eternity and worth of the Christian afterlife. Sarcophagi were, were most often designed to remain above ground. These were usually made of various ingredients such as limestone. Without getting into a science lesson, the limestone would react to the body and break it down quickly, and the word sarcophagus actually translates into flesh eating. This is the cadaver tomb of Richard Fleming, Bishop of Lincoln, who died in 1431. In the lower part of the monument is an effigy to the decaying corpse of the bishop, one of the first cadaver tombs and the only surviving tombs of its kind in England. In the 1400s, Europe was swept by the Black Death, which killed at least one-third and possibly as much as one-half of the population. It would have been deeply unsettling for those left behind to witness such a massive, shocking scale of death, and the macabre image of the cadaver tomb illustrates people's preoccupation with death at this time. Bishop Richard Fleming was a powerful individual who founded Leakin College in Oxford and he died in 1431. As a symbol of death, the effigies of rotting corpses were incredibly symbolic. Not only did they show death as the great leveller, but they also represented oppression and poverty. By choosing to have themselves depicted in a shocking state of physical decay, individuals were atoning for their worldly riches and power and hoping to gain salvation into the next world. English boy Little Hugh's death was falsely attributed to the Jews. As Little Saint Hugh was never canonised, the name is incorrect. In the blood libel era, saints were generally given to children whose deaths were interpreted as Jewish sacrifices. Hugh was one of the best known. Through Henry III's direct intervention, the Crown gave credence to ritual child murder alleged allegations for the first time. As a result, unlike other English blood libel stories, Hugh's death became part of the historical record, medieval literature, and popular ballads that circulated until the 20th century. Hugh, aged nine, was reported missing on the 31st of July and on the 29th of August his body was found in a well. Jews were alleged to have imprisoned Hugh, tortured and ultimately crucified him during that time. According to legend, the body was thrown down a well after attempts to bury it failed when the earth had expelled it. A Jewish man named Copin confessed to the murder according to reports and according to these contemporary accounts he was also granted immunity from punishment for his confession. John Le of Lexington may have interrogated Copin under torture to get this confession. Henry III arrived in Lincoln about a month after Copin's arrest and confession. The king ordered Copin's death and he ordered the arrest and hold in the Tower of London of 90 Jews associated with whose disappearance and death. They were accused of ritual murder. A total of 18 Jews were hanged for refusing to participate in the proceedings, claiming it was a show trial and refusing to accept mercy from the Christian jury. 
After news spread of Hugh's death, miracles were attributed to him. Hugh was regarded as a Christian martyr and sites associated with his life became objects of pilgrimage. A shrine dated to the period immediately after the expulsion of the Jews and it was largely destroyed after the Reformation. During the Cathedral Restoration of 1790, a stone coffin, three feet by three inches long, was found containing the skeleton of a boy which was drawn by Samuel Grimm. This is all that remains of this shrine. In a 14th century le legend, two naughty animals called imps were sent by Satan to accomplish malicious work on earth. In the wake of causing anarchy in northern England, the two imps made their way to Lincoln Cathedral. When they got there, they caused absolute mayhem. They crushed tables and seats and tripped over the bishop. When suddenly a holy messenger emerged from a book of hymns and advised them to stop. One of the imps was bold and began tossing rocks at the heavenly angel, yet the other imp grovelled under wrecked tables and seats. The holy messenger turned the principal imp to stone, allowing the second imp the opportunity to get away. It is said that even on still days it is breezy around the house of God. It is believed the free imp is still whizzing around the cathedral searching for his friend while his friend, who was turned to stone, will forever be here in the eaves of the cathedral.